We're going to talk about some big ones. Got City heady, Slickers, though. one of the more beloved uh, Billy Crystal films, written mm -hmm. by Paul Blue Mandel and Lowell Gans. Uh, dramedy. Um, I always found it a little erratic in tone, but I know a lot of other people don't have that problem with it. But I, I like I think it. It's weird to transition from a scene where there's a stampede with a herd to another scene that's supposed to be real sitcom -y and broad to another mm -hmm. scene where Daniel Stern has a gun in a guy's mouth. Just it doesn't flow as well. Yeah, I, okay, Jack right. Palance is great, and he deservedly won an Oscar for this. But I think uh, I think the highlight of the film is actually Bruno Kirby when he tells his story about trying to relate to his kids. And of course, they take that's they take what worked in the first movie, which we'll get to the sequel. And they're like Bruno, Bruno Kirby. We don't need him for the sequel. What we need him for but only the best part of that film. <laughs> John Lovitz in his place. Oh, Jack Palance has a twin we never heard about? Oh, wait till we get to that sequel. It's so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like this film a lot, but I think that's also nostalgia. Yeah. Um, it's the first thing I ever saw Billy Crystal in. Oh, okay. And probably Daniel Stern, to be honest. Mm. I know he was in that uh, baseball. Oh, wow. I, ne I didn't see Home Alone until I was in high school. Oh, wow. Really? Okay. Yeah. But I don't know if you guys remember. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Uh, I think I would have liked it if I'd seen it as a kid. But. Yeah. yeah was just like I, I could tell you, like, yeah. Home Alone's a good movie, but that's only because I've seen it as a kid. Yeah. Uh, so, again, oh, nostalgia awesome. attached to it, but, like, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's a bit over the top and unnecessary if you're an adult. Yeah. <laughs> um, Spike Lee movie Jungle Fever came out. So, mm -hmm. Wesley Snipes and Annabelle Sciorra, they have an interracial relationship. Uh, I've never seen it, so I can't attest to its quality. But uh, we had just talked about another. He's been putting out movies in quick succession because we had just talked about Mo Better Blues. Yeah. A few months before this. Like November. He, 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 he must have filmed them right back to back. Yeah. And uh, honestly, it showcases before he became Blade, Wesley Snipes had dramatic chops before he became the action stereotype. Yeah, well, I mean... King of New York, he had a bit of drama. Right. I think once Blade hit, then everybody associated him with the action genre and Demolition Man, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, he well when those movies came out, like he was really uh, flexing his like uh, martial out martial arts prowess because like he he definitely like a few years or like a year after uh, Blade came came out, he was hosting a, a martial arts ceremony. Uh, I forget where, but I remember seeing it uh, when he when I was on vacation in North Carolina, and like uh, he either was hosting it or he got an award on it or something like that. Right. Um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves came out. This is one of the other films that's kind of stuck around. Billy or Billy, um, yeah, Billy Campbell. I almost said Billy Crystal. <laughs> he's. I read an interview with him about how he's living today. He's actually stayed in norway he he got so fascinated with the killing he met a woman in norway and now lives there so he's talking about like leaving hollywood behind and he said yeah the rocketeer was obviously the biggest moment we were real excited about it and then stuff like robin hood came along and trounced it <laughs> so Ew. which is kind of another like swashbuckling period piece um honestly of it's weird because we just recently talked about alan rickman playing a villain in uh, Quigley, and mm -hmm. I always associate him as a villain in this and Die Hard, and he's mm -hmm. fantastic in both. Honestly, again, the weak part of the film is Kevin Costner himself. His accent is either non-existent or all over the place. Um, that's that's but, the joke that Carrie Ills does in uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights, and I speak with an English accent. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I remember owning the. This is weird. This was a. Uh, it was. Uh, Marketed towards adults, but I remember having the toys. I don't know if you guys had the toys like I had. I saw Temple. them. Before. Oh yeah, no, I, I vaguely remember the. I mean, that's coming. That's coming off the whole uh, Alien and Terminator thing, where like right. movies for adults will churn out toys for kids. Well, that's another thing about Rocketeer. This they they pushed it forward finally because it had toyetic potential, and that's what these movies were doing. Right. Even though you shouldn't be marketing them, you have a. Notting, a sheriff of Nottingham 
playing with a Ripley. Like they didn't care if they were interacting. Yeah. People had the oh, leg on their face. There's a witch that has boils on her face. They're yeah, marketing yeah. towards kids. But they thought anything could be the next Star Wars, is what it was. Yeah. I mean, well, look, well, look at Terminator and uh, Predator, like uh, rated R movies, thousand. and they still like they still made it big with those toys. Yeah, I had the I had the two thousand. Yeah, I, I had yeah I had uh I had a car or vehicle from Aliens, like it was like a little, like it wasn't like the actual vehicle that they used in the Aliens, but like mm-hmm. a miniature version where it was a one seater, one character went into it, but like on the side, like a rocket thing came out and you could shoot it okay um but i think i, I don't think i owned any xenomorphs or anything like you just, I just had, had the car i just had the, it probably had it probably came, it probably came with hicks yeah or yeah, is hicks, yeah one of one of the marines michael bean or is that michael yeah. Bean's yeah. hicks yeah it's gonna be hicks or it's gonna be whatever uh bill paxton's gonna yeah be. so like one, one of the marines like yeah. I, I had just it. like a whalen yutani yeah fan but like i remember like a bunch of my friends they had like several different xenomorphs like a bunch of kids had the bull alien mm-hmm. uh, i remember those being in stores yeah I just i didn't know what it was when i was six right. so, yeah i i walked right past the robin hood action figures i was uh, mm. nothing and they had that it, was, it was a big uh, hit. Little juice mm-hmm. the movie i had that yeah uh like any movie that came out of the 80s and the 90s, early yeah. 90s like definitely like it's like toys, 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 toys. Doesn't matter if it's not aimed for kids, just yeah. toys. Yeah, there's nothing. Somebody's anymore. gonna buy it. Nothing anymore. And these kids are gonna love the toys, so they're gonna see the movies when they get older. Because mm-hmm. that was the idea. That's yeah. Well, one movie that they definitely didn't make toys for, unless they were trying to make polyps, was uh, Dying Young, which is oh, wow. Scott is diagnosed with terminal cancer, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> He's, <laughs> what a transition nice segue i was thinking how i was going to segue back <laughs> um julia roberts is in i think it's one of campbell scott's first film roles uh son of legendary george c scott ah. and uh it's actually directed by joel schumacher hmm. very sappy and melodramatic ah well but uh a uh, sequel came out this month, uh, The Naked Gun 22 and a half, The Smell of Fear, which I'm going to go on record and say, those Naked Gun movies, perfect trilogy. Oh, really? I like them all. I like Maybe all I should three. actually watch them. I had always heard the sequels weren't that good. I know I've seen at least one of them. I just don't remember which one I've seen. because I I've saw seen the, the first one. I have like 11. Definitely the first one's a classic. Yeah. I think the other two are... Uh, not too inferior in quality. I, they all have their share of laughs. But uh, this is before Leslie Nielsen became like overly reliant on the spoof genre. Dracula Dead, I'm loving it. Yeah, stuff like that garbage. And yeah. uh, Spy Hard and stuff like that. So uh, even O.J. Simpson's a little funny in this. Oh. As I, love him. I love him in the first Naked Gun. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Oh, maybe I did see all three of them. Which one does he get injured in a lot? Is or is that everything? Yeah, it's a running gag in all of them. Okay, I. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. I wasn't sure if it was just one of the films. You know who showed me the uh, Naked Gun movies? Who? Uh, it's actually one of two people. Uh, somebody like two like people we know from high school. Uh, either Thomas Campanella or uh, Dom Skull. Oh, one of the two sense. showed me them. That makes sense. I think uh, Robert Goulet is the villain in this sequel actually yeah definitely haven't seen so that. it's interesting they got these really prestigious uh character actors to uh play the villains because in the first one it's uh, ricardo mantoma yeah. yeah and in the third one it's fred ward oh well, oh our guy from tremors yeah. yeah so we'll get to that yeah mm. now i want now i want to see these two <laughs> and now we're on to poster boy Oh, see, poster boy. It's a very story. short month. Oh no! <clears throat> I must have closed it. I have it open. I'm sorry. Great thing. Right. I just watched this. Yeah. Talk about it in depth. All right, you ready, Jeff? Let's do it. You should have permission. It didn't go right away. 
You gotta be patient. Ah. So you may know this already. Because this is a fairly popular. He knows it. Ah, well. It's okay. We knew this game might come. I'm still gonna play along. I'm still gonna come up with an alternate title. We really had very few. This is what I was hoping we were setting up over the time that we've been doing Poster Boy. Even if you start knowing the films, you'll come up with a better way to market it or title it or plot it. Okay. All right. Frame it. So what we're looking at right here, there's two legs sticking out of the front yard of a house and looking on is some teenage, presumably babysitter behind a rock band of children that or in front of a rock band of children. Like one's wearing sunglasses, one's playing guitar, one's chewing bubble gum, and the other's just like doing doing one of these. Like, doing, uh-huh. doing, the, doing the truffle shuffle, it looks like. Right. Oh, exactly. God, he is, isn't he? It does. He looks like <laughs> it looks like Chunk from uh Goonies. Actually, hold up one second. And it's okay. On, on Tristan's screen, the kid that's doing the little grin. His eye looks a little red and his lips look a little black. So he looks like he's possessed. Or a zombie. Or a zombie. Like... So it's the kid from The Omen <laughs> yeah, at yeah. the summer camp. And all right. So yeah, I, I, I know what the movie the is, time. but let me tell you what this picture looks like it could be. So Damien from The Omen is at summer camp. <laughs> and it's like a sort of sequel. And then you've got young cyclops up on the top Mm -hmm. it looks like james marsden from from the x-men movies uh and then around there is i don't a young kurt cobain perhaps oh god (laughs) this is like a, a summer camp for wayward youths and then it comes about that like damien cyclops the kid from andre kurt cobain and the kid that got left over from uh Flight of the Navigator. I'll get drive to this weird summer camp that's run by Christina Applegate. <laughs> yeah, could they show her? It was, it was actually blurred out, but yeah, it's Christina Applegate. Because this poster is originally for "Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead." Yes. Uh, there you go. But I also, I don't know why it's by, small. Judging by the legs sticking out, I also thought this could be a very dark sequel to Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's got the coloring where they like or like an alternate skewed timeline i mean they could do that accidentally man. like doubtfire dies before they find out that it's their dad <laughs> um no rules no curfews no baths no nagging no pulse <laughs> what, a what happened God, what a horrifying tagline <laughs> now have, have you seen this jeff i haven't no Neither have I. So, oh, given that, oh, I, has Jimmy seen it? Oh, I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Like my, my cousins were a big fan of this movie, so I've seen I've seen it a lot. What do you think? Don't tell the mom the babysitter's dead is actually about. Now that you made up your own, <laughs> you think they kill her? Yeah. See, that's what I thought. I think it's I, an accident. I she think... falls down the stairs, but I don't know. I think it's meant to look like an accident, but Christina Applegate's face tells me otherwise. There was some sort, <laughs> some sort of ulterior motive. Like she's she's smirking at that corpse, man. Sure is. And I, you know, I feel like there was there was some payback involved. The babysitter was not actually supposed to be dead. They're Don't, definitely playing. They still can't her, tell uh, mom because if they tell mom, then she's going to turn in Christina Applegate, who has a fucking past man and you can't there's i was gonna say she looks like a femme fatale it's gonna go wrong they're playing up her uh married with children Im- image with this with the yeah. cleavage and the low-cut top and everything does she even look like that in the movie uh, yeah she doesn't um, dress she, that for she Bosch looks like that and then some like i could tell you like i could tell you so much Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I just watched it. It sounds like apparently a seminal film. For, I mean, uh, you know, pre like pubescent Jim. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the actual plot? <laughs> right, so the plot is this: uh, this deadbeat mother leaves her kids, leaves her kids to go on a business trip for a month. Meanwhile, she lets these kids just roam free, do whatever they want. 
Yeah, well, welcome. Great. They're possessed. The, the father, I think, is out of the picture. It, I think. He's out of the picture. You don't know why. Like, he either left or you yeah. just, you're not sure. But the, clearly, their parents did a horrible job. They leave him with uh, this elderly babysitter who just has like a heart attack, dies or asleep. Yeah. So instead of notifying their mother, who's in Australia, I believe, they they drop her off at a at a church, her body, in a trunk, and then they decide they need their allowances going around. So Christina Applegate lies on her resume to get a job in the fashion industry as a secretary, and she slowly rises um one of the one of the people working at the uh fashion agency dave duchovny oh well yeah i forgot he was an arrival yeah okay um and yeah tristan you'll like this her one menial job that she works at the guy she falls for josh charles i knew that i knew he was in it so i knew where you were going with this and Upon rewatching it, he is the clingiest, most nagging, annoying <laughs> character in the movie. Probably good at that. Well, why won't you tell me what you're doing for a living? I guess you don't care. You don't love me or anything. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess they're, they're flipping the trope. Yeah, actually. Around oh, so the, Christina Applegate becomes the, the boss bitch. And uh, her boyfriend's just kind of like, it's her boyfriend. That's yeah. her boy toy. She has more chemistry with her brother. Oh, in the movie, and she does with Josh Charles. Ew. In fact, there's a there's a there's a weird incestuous subtext to one scene where I don't remember uh, that. Oh well, yeah, you'll remember this dialogue exchange where he's like, you know, I've been sleeping in the kitchen all day. You know, you never take me out anymore. And she's like, look, I I didn't realize you wanted that. He's like, yeah, I would like to be complimented on how my house. Oh, looked. you know what? I read I read that differently when I seen it as a kid. Like I read that as like. <laughs> They were the two oldest kids in the family, so like they they had the split like uh, well, they were the mother and the father, like yeah no like the mother and father. So like she was the breadwinner, and the then like he, he, he was complaining he was about her not taking her out. Of the so like he felt like the uh, the at home wife. Yeah. So like they're flipping a lot of tropes, like with her and her boyfriend and her and her brother. Yeah. yeah. Which is interesting mm-hmm. to say the least. Right. Well, it doesn't become the Brady Bunch movie, that's for sure. <laughs> no, that was way better than Brady Bunch movie. True. There's just. In actual incestuous subplot, yeah. I mean, they're step, they're step siblings, so yeah. Where do you think Pornhub got Where it from? A whole subgenre <laughs> happened. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the final thing I wanted to discuss was since since we just touched upon her a little bit uh, at the end there was Jennifer Connelly. Do you guys have a, a favorite Jennifer Connelly film? Well, apparently, Jimmy. Apparently, Jimmy really touched upon himself when he thought about Christine hmm. Applegate in that movie. Oh, yeah, no. I know, I set that up. Yeah, no. Um, uh, but back to Jennifer <laughs> Connelly. I would, have, I would have to say uh, Labyrinth, honestly. Perfect debut. Requiem for a Dream. Perfect uh, resurgence. Beautiful Mind. The Oscar win. And I'll go with the one that I, uh, this was really clean cut. You guys went way too fast on this. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we did exactly. um, this is a film that not many people talk about anymore, but House of Sand and Fog, I think Ooh. she gets one of the most underrated performances <clears throat> in Great. her big resurgence. It's coming right after Beautiful Mind and Requiem for a Dream. So it kind of got overshadowed by those better films. Ron Eldar. I also liked her in Hulk. She's fine in Hulk, yeah. So she had a she had a really good career resurgence around the early two thousands. Yeah, so, uh, she's the reason that I made the Edgars, uh, because she won the Oscar for best supporting actress when she's basically the only woman in the film, and I didn't understand how Oscar campaigning worked, so I didn't realize that the studio submitted her as supporting actress because she is supporting Russell Crowe. It makes sense if you want to make him the only lead. But she's in as much of the film as he is. She's the reason Nash is sane enough to be. He would continue to deteriorate if it wasn't for her. Exactly. Like they died together. They're, they were like forever interchangeable. You know, it's so to have Jennifer Connelly just get supporting actress, I felt like was a, a miss 
fire on the Oscars part and all other award shows. So I had her an actress and I made a whole awards program for the last 20 years because of that. So yep. and my old dude. Yeah. She also uh interesting little tidbit. I didn't realize that she was she cameoed as the suit lady voice in uh Spider-Man Homecoming. Which which is well, that, of Iron Man. Well, well that's the other thing i didn't realize she was married to paul bettany yeah who yes. played the voice of jarvis and then eventually Vicious. which is funny yeah she's a voice now he's a voice now like and he, they marry yeah it's it's cute yeah they met on a, on the set of a beautiful mind yeah oh yeah i forgot paul bettany was in that yeah who where he also played an imaginary voice in a head yeah. you could <laughs> almost say he did the same thing in master and commander yeah, because really they're best good. friends in that. Yeah, if you <laughs> think of that as like ancestors of Nash. He's a uh, figment. What if, what if Paul Bettany is just like Russell Crowe's imaginary friend in real life, but like he CGI'd in the movies? There, there was a joke going Paul Bettany just only going. exists in people's imagination. There, there was a joke that Chaucer isn't real in A Knight's Tale. He's just Heath Ledger's imagination. And the actual ah. two were Alan Tudyk and uh, the, the king from Game of Thrones. Wow. So Han Solo dripped them up in that prequel. Yeah, there's no actual villain. No villain in that movie. If anyone could play Harvey in a in a new movie adaptation, the the rabbit from the from the, the Jimmy Stewart. Now I kind of want to see that. He's he's uh, who's supposed to be invisible. The only one who could play him is Paul Bettany. Yeah, because he just excels at playing imaginary or virtual <laughs> yeah. characters. That reminds me. I got like I we, imagine the priest happened. We we got we got Holden. Yeah, we got to see more of Farscape so you can see the Harvey in that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, there's a character in there that's called Harvey in the show Farscape that I love. Mm -hmm. And, like, I've never seen the original content that Harvey was in. Well, you can see Jeff's play. But... I see it because I'm directing it in October. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, maybe that's your yeah. But It's yeah, basically no. the same as But anyway. Movie. Nice little plug at the end there self-promoting this guy other other than that uh we might as well plug that if you you want to rate review subscribe we always love seeing that uh like i said last time we've been getting viewers to the actual website so i, I know you're all listening i've had people tell me in person that uh and don't be a wise guy and give this video a thumbs down i yeah. saw that in the last video yeah we'll stick eddie valentine on you find out who you are wait there actually wasn't a Thumbs, the thumbs down the last video. Mm. I don't know what that means. People are actually watching it that don't like us. So I disagree. What? Maybe there's no. just people that don't like the doors. No, they, they hate those. What about Bob? What about Bob? It was just the last two days? Yeah. Man, I don't know about this. You know, maybe mm -hmm. some of you people shouldn't even comment. Listen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're all here for the love of the game, all right? We love everybody, even if you hate us. I mean, I live off of hate, so like, bring it. Direct all of your hate mail toward Jimmy. Yeah. Thanks. Jimmy at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> it's Yahoo. <laughs> College. Jimmy at Netscape. I knew I should have been the first one to get this email. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> Wherever you are. All right. Uh, next, next month, we're going to take a little detour into uh, a realm that we're not exactly uh gonna be familiar with we're going into the hood with boys in the hood so we're, we're gonna look at john singleton's first film and uh talk about his career and cuba Gooding jr and you know start to see some diversity in the 90s yeah since yeah. that's uh sort of been lacking a thing we've noticed so and you know you have you know white boys review it so sorry yeah we'll see we'll see how that goes three and a half white guys Review Boys in the Hood. So. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> get, get the outro going. Come on. We'll catch, you, we'll catch you next time. Sorry guys, give me a second. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that cat just like jumped right into his the rocketeer. Yeah. That's a rocketeer. Yeah.